Okay. Um, again, good morning, good afternoon, uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Shima Odins at InfoZone, and thank you for joining today's session, Best Princi um, Basic Principle Designs uh, by Apexa Pathak. And this is the third third version of um, dashboard webinars that we've been doing so far. The first one was back to basics, and second one was when to use what charts. And today we're talking about the basic design principles for click view and click sense. And I'd like to go through some WebEx logistics. So everyone is muted during this session. So even if you speak up, we're not going to be able to hear you. And this session is recorded. So um, be aware of that. And there is going to be a survey at the end of session, so please um, fill out the survey so that we get to know what other topics you'd like to hear about and so forth. And then at the end of the session, we have a Q&A chat panel for about 10 minutes. So if you have any questions, please utilize the Q&A chat panel and ask any questions live. That being said, I will pass it on to Apeksha Pathak. Apeksha? Thank you, Shima. Um, hi everyone, thank you for joining today's session and um, as Shima mentioned today's session is about basic design principles for click view and click sense. So before I jump into presenting, I would like to introduce myself so that you know a little bit about my background. Uh, I'm a senior user experience designer at InfoZone. I joined the company this year in June. Um, so it's been uh, about four to five months now. Um, uh, I have three years of experience designing ClickView applications uh, as well as ClickSense applications and a total of five years of experience designing for web and mobile applications. So apart from ClickView, I also design for mobile and web and have um, a good amount of user experience design uh, experience. Um, uh, my uh, before in joining InfoZone, I used to work at Click as a UI designer, and I designed a lot of demos uh, that you might have seen on demo.clickview.com. So uh, if you go there, um, you might see some demos designed by me, for example, ex Expense Dashboard, Clinical Pathways, uh, Social Media was the latest one. Um, apart from designing demos, I also did some best practices, so um, I did do some people enablement sessions like today's webinar over there, and I also have written some blog posts, so which you might see on the Click Design community or the Click View Design blog and Click community. All right, so with that, let's get started. Um, so today's session is about the basic design principles that um, you will uh, use when you're designing applications in Click View or Click Sense. So before, before I talk about the design principles, I want to take a step back and talk a little bit about why we are talking about basic design principles specifically for Click View and Click Sense uh, versus basic design principles in general. So if you Google basic design principles, you'll come across a lot of uh, things like symmetry, hierarchy, um, and so on and so forth. But why, why are we talking about designing for ClickView specifically? And I think the answer lies in ClickView as a tool and the power of ClickView as a tool. And we as designers need to bring out that power. And ClickView, in the sense, is a very unique tool. So I consider it as a Rubik cube. So uh, because when you choose a data point, you the software will dynamically adjust everything and um, uh, make you or show you that the data which is all associated to that data point that you chose. And so I think it is a very nonlinear pattern. Uh, whereas other applications or things you might have worked with, uh, the drill down pattern is very linear. So you go from A to B to C to D and so on. But whereas in Click View, it's a very nonlinear dynamic tool. So for us as designers, we need to take this into consideration so that we show the power of uh, the tool in within our designs and we bring out that power. So our designs uh, make sure that the dynamic uh, elements in Click View are put forth uh, through our designs. 
With that said, and the basic knowledge of why we are talking about Click View, I would like to talk about uh, some uh, uh, seven basic design principles that I have jotted down. And I call them basic design principles, but these really are considerations for you uh, to work with when you're starting to design in Click View or starting to develop an application in Click View. With that said, let's get started. The first thing that I want to talk about today is utilizing the power of visualization. Um, and you might have heard of the phrase that a picture is worth a thousand words. Well, research proves that we humans comprehend a picture much faster than text. So um, here on the screen, what you're seeing is the Anscombis Quartet. Uh, you might have seen this before. Uh, if not, I'll explain a little bit about what it is. So you're seeing four sets of uh, X and Y quadrants. And in this table, you'll be able to see the X coordinate and the Y coordinate, and you'll be able to read through it and maybe visualize, okay, where, where does the point lie? But as soon as I show you a picture, you'll be able to see trends, anomalies, clusters, and so on. So visualizing data is much more powerful and easy than understanding data just by reading text or tables. And um, because we deal with a lot of data and showing that data in the form of visuals is very important because it takes it takes just a few matter of few seconds to just paint a picture in your mind that okay what's what's the what's happening in this uh, picture or what's happening with my data so clickview is a very powerful tool in that sense uh, I've, in my experience i've seen a lot of people using clickview uh, just like an excel sheet but um, that's the first rule, that Click View is more than uh, just rows and columns and tables. It's, it's a very powerful data visualization tool. So here, if you see in this dashboard, in, in a matter of second, you'll be able to say, okay, my market share is going down. The pie chart tells me that. Uh, the market size, okay, in 2012 it was less, but in 2016 it was more. And then in the map, okay, I see what's going on in the world. Uh, with the market share. So imagine all this in the form of a table. It'll take you at least a couple of minutes to figure out what's going on. But with the visualization, in a matter of few seconds, you'll be able to say, okay, I get the picture now and let's move on. So this is the first and foremost principle that I want to talk about, that whenever possible, use visuals instead of tables. Um, I know that a lot of times it makes sense more, more sense to have tables, but whenever it makes sense to have visuals, use it. It. Use that power of click view. Use that power that the tool gives you. The second design principle that I want to talk about today is information organization. Um, so it, uh, information organization is a very important part of uh, what we do because we deal with so much data that it, it, sometimes it becomes hard to um, organize that information in a proper way. So. Um, what I recommend is what is the user trying to get out of the application? The user is trying to get answers to three basic questions, the, the what question, why, and how. So what is the health of my business or what is going good, what is going bad? The second question is an obvious follow-up to the what question is the why. Okay, so I know that something is going wrong and why is it going wrong, so let me investigate. And then the third question is how. So how can I drill down and investigate a little more deeper or drill down a little more deeper? How can I do that? So this is how our brain works. So obviously our brain uh, processes information from the highest level to the lowest level. And um, leveraging this power of, of or aligning our uh, how we lay out information in the way our brain processes information is important. So uh, we have come up, or uh, Matthias Karnamark, who is a very senior member of the InfoZone team, came up with the concept of the DAR, which is the dashboard analysis and report. Um, and he uh, he designed this concept when he used to work at Click, and which is a very um, I think it's a very important concept uh, when it comes to Click View because it's a lot of data, and sometimes we just get lost in how to organize that data. So what a dashboard means is that it answers the questions of what. So what is good, what's bad, what's going wrong, what's going good, that's the question. So it's a very high level information. The second is the analysis sheet, uh, which is um, which the A stands for. 
And this is a one level deeper, which where you analyze the data. So it answers the why question. Okay, why is something going wrong? Let me investigate. And the third is the report sheet, which is your tables and rows and columns of data, all the detailed information that you find, which is the R. So the dashboard analysis and the report sheet is how you might be able to organize data in the way that the brain processes information. So. With that said, um, uh, data is seen at a very high level and then drilled down one level deeper, and then the answer to your question, how, can be jumped to the report sheet where you see the nitty-gritties of the information. All right, so the third design principle that I want to talk about is leveraging the power of pre-attentive pre processing. And uh, you're seeing some images on the screen right now. Um, if I tell you to identify uh, what's what's the difference, what what you see differently in the first image, which is seen the color, which um, is shown by the color, is that you'll say that okay, I see the red dot in a sea of blue dots. In the second image, you'll see that. Um, there's a little red dot um, in a lot of squares. In the third, you'll see that the bar is a little tilted. In the fourth, you'll see a little size difference uh, in a bar in uh, the other bars, among the other bars. And the third is you'll see a little clutter. So um, what I'm trying to say here is that color, shape, orientation, size, and proximity are some of the elements that the human brain can spot very easily and immediately within a given data set that uh, they see. So the anomalies by these characteristics can be spotted very easily. And this is known as pre-attentive processing power of the brain. And the, more, the, the goal of most ClickView users is to sift through a tons and tons of data and to find trends, anomalies, similarities, differences. So this is the third design principle, which is leveraging the power of pre-attentive processing. So the user can spot trends very easily. Uh, if you look at the picture below, which says year-to-date revenue, you might take a few seconds to understand what's going on, what's the data. But if I do that, then bang, you'll come to know. Okay, uh, I see some red numbers there. I see a red icon there, and I think something is going wrong. I need to investigate more. So this is how, when you give, uh, when you use this power of uh, pre-attentive processing, just by making some differentiation in color or shape or orientation and so on, um, it it will help the users to spot this information very easily, which is the main goal of our designs uh, within a dashboard. Um, so right now you're. Uh, this is an example of a screen where you're seeing a lot of information and data. Um, you'll see the numbers, but um, you'll take a little while to understand what it is about. But once, once I show you some icons uh, and highlighted in very bright colors, you'll know that, okay, something is going wrong here. My year-to-date number seems fine, but the August number seems bad. So this is how uh, just by uh, giving some icons, some visual cues like this, uh, you can really leverage the power of pre-attentive processing. Color is a very strong attribute to do this, but there are others that vary in the intensity, like the, there can be a difference in shape. So when you're showing a scatter plot, you'll see like one, one dot somewhere else, and that will uh, make you spot the anomaly. So that's a difference in proximity. Contrasting colors uh, is a second example. So depending on what information needs to be shown, whether quantitative or qualitative, various visual attributes can be applied. And uh, visually encoding this data for rapid perception can make the information consumption in a dashboard very easy for the user. The fourth design principle is clean and simple layout. And as I said before, we all deal with a lot of data, and we all want to accommodate a lot of data on the screen. But when there's a lot of information on the screen, it becomes really cumbersome for the user to understand the data, um, or even find a starting point to view the data from one point to the other, and the eyes just keep darting. So you, you really um, need a few seconds to focus on, okay, what am I looking at now? So clean and simple layout can not only 
speed up comprehension of information, but it also provides a pleasing aesthetic appeal. And we all know that we all want our designs to look very good and nice and simple and clean. So the rule number one is to align all the objects. So uh, click view, whenever you have a blank sheet, you throw all, a lot of data objects over there, a lot of elements, a lot of text boxes, make sure you align them. So right align, left align, center align, however you, you're based on your layout, just make sure you align them. The second is uh, more of a recommendation. Um, I usually use the 12 column um, or the eight, 12 column or the 18 column grid to align my objects and this is a very web, uh, it's a web standard so if you take any website online you'll, and lay this grid over it, you'll see that uh, a lot of websites follow these pat, uh, grid patterns. So um, this will make it easier for you to align objects. Uh, when If you go on the web and um, you Google 12 column or 18 column grid, uh, you can easily download this grid and uh, you can lay it over your click view application and then uh, align your objects in the, in, based on the grid. Now obviously these, uh, this alignment and grid applies to click view, but when it comes to sense, if you have uh, worked with sense or are planning to work with sense, you'll see that uh, they have given a grid already so that uh, they, you make sure that your elements are aligned and so on. But even then with the grid, it becomes a little hard sometimes to uh, really align objects and make sure that uh, the objects don't merge into each other. So here are some recommendations for quick sense. Um, so define your grid, whether you want to, uh, uh, whether you want two columns or you want the filters on the left, right, or top, you want to define that first. Second is align the objects so that they are perfectly right aligned, left aligned, um, and so on. Uh, as much as possible, make sure that you have less objects on a given screen. Um, and then uh, the last and important thing is that you make sure you have at least one column and row distance between all the objects so that they don't look like they're merging into each other. So these are a few recommendations for ClickSense when you're de developing an application there. The fifth design principle is color. Now color is uh, a strong element in design. It's like a double-edged sword, I would say. It can really make or break the design. And a lot of uh, people, when it comes to colors, get very confused. So uh, a rule of thumb is to use not more than five colors in your color palette. A lot of times we deal with uh, our company brand colors and so on, so we don't have to worry about that. But when, uh, when you're lost and you don't know where to start, the rule of thumb is don't use more than five colors. And my recommendation is use muted colors for uh, elements like backgrounds and so on and use very bright colors like red, green to highlight data. Uh, Adobe Cooler is a very uh, nice website if you are ever um, don't know or ha need some help in uh, defining a color palette for your application, go to Adobe Cooler, choose a color that you want, and then based on the color, it will give you a color palette, um, whether you choose an analogous or a monochromatic color palette. So this is a very good resource. The other very important thing about color is color accessibility. Um, I want to talk a little bit about color blindness, which is a very important factor to consider when it comes to design. Uh, about 8% of men among our population are color blind, so it's um, a big number, so to say, but you need to consider this. Um, and we tend to use a lot of green, red, and yellows in our design. So when it comes to colorblind person, this is how they'll see it. So you'll see that there's very little distinction between red and green, and it becomes very hard when a colorblind person sees it to really distinguish between, okay, what's going good and what's going bad. So a recommendation is when you're using red and green and when it becomes, um, when you're using traffic light gauges or so on, use a little greener shade of, uh, or blue shade of green instead of a yellow green so that the colorblind person sees it as a gray and it becomes much easier to distinguish between the red and the green. Or the other recommendation is using icons. So icons make it very easy even for a normal person to spot uh, what's going, uh, or the difference between good and bad or red, on, red and green. So make sure you have considered that our colorblind audience as well. 
The sixth is the power of contrast. Contrast, in my opinion, is a very powerful design element. It can really make the design speak for itself, which is the whole purpose of the design. So here, if you're seeing on the screen, um, you'll see that um, just by adding some contrasting color to some of the letters, the designer is trying to sh show or uh, show more than what the text is saying. So it's a very strong design element. And for us, especially when we're designing dashboards, we need to highlight some KPIs uh, to make them stand out from the rest of the information. So contrast allows that to, us to do that, so highlight the key design elements. Uh, here you're, what you're seeing on the screen, um, you'll see that a very heavy contrast is applied to the left part of the screen, and that's because this was the most important KPI. This was done for a customer, and this was the most important KPI that they wanted to highlight, and that's why you'll see that um, that is brought out by uh, the contrasting color that's used. Now, color uh, contrast can be applied in color, but it can also be applied in text sizes, font styles, and so on, depending on how and what you want to show. The last and a very important design principle that I want to highlight today is consistency. Consistency is the simplest and the basic rule of design, um, and there's no two ways about it. Your designs have to be consistent. Your Whatever you do has to be consistent throughout everything. So if you want your designs to look professional and coherent, you've got to maintain consistency. Uh, consistency in layout, colors, tones, texture, textures, typography, patterns, and even icons. So uh, if you don't, if you're not consistent from sheet to sheet, a design can really fall apart, and you don't want that. Also, research proves that when a design lacks consistency, it becomes harder for the user to grasp information from page to page, and which results in a frustration and a very steep learning curve. So make sure your designs are con consistent from page to page. Uh, it's, it's a very important aspect. Um, also, consistency in all aspects of the design. So if you're using a color palette, make sure you're um, you're taking that color palette on every sheet. Or if you're using the search object on the top right-hand side, make sure the search object is on the top, top right-hand side on every sheet. Don't don't make it such that it's somewhere else because you couldn't accommodate it uh, where you had accommodated it in the sheet earlier. It will just take five seconds for the user to even um, search for that search that he or she will say, oh, it was just here, I can't find it anymore. Or it will just take five extra seconds for them to notice uh, the difference. So make sure you're consistent uh, in every way that you go. So with this, I would like to summarize what I spoke about today. The first is utilizing the power of quick view. So make sure you utilize that visualization power. Um, a quick view is more than Excel sheets and rows and columns of data, it gives you a more dynamic uh, uh, feel or gives you the ability to visualize a lot of information. So make sure you use that. The second is organize information like your brain processes it, so from the highest level to the lowest level. Third is to leverage the power of pre-attentive processing to highlight the uh, data that you want to for quick and easy uh, comprehension. Third is, uh, fourth is have a clean and simple layout for a very professional looking design. Align objects, make sure they're right aligned, left aligned, and so on. Um, use colors very judiciously. Make sure you have our colorblind audience into consideration as well. Uh, use the power of contrast to highlight key data elements in the dashboard. And the seventh is always be consistent. With that, I would like to conclude this session and thank you for joining again. Uh, I hope this was useful for you and I hope you enjoyed the session. Um, I'll open it up for any questions and answers today. Thank you. Thank you, Apeksha. So if you have any questions, please feel free to use the Q&A panel and ask any design questions that you've been wondering about for a long time and ask away to Apeksha. And while you're thinking about the questions, I would like to introduce some upcoming topics that we are going to present through webinars. So uh, in the past, as I mentioned, we have already done a dashboard design back to basics as well as when to use which charts. But we are considering um, 
doing the webinars about the considerations for multiple devices and the usages. So I'm sure you have, uh, many of you have come across where you need to design for desktop, tablets, and phones and how you do that. Um, another topic is how to pop the important messages. So this is applying to some dashboard five seconds rule, but how do you pop some uh, key elements? So that's going to be the session about it. And then the last one is the link table. And I don't know how many of you are aware, but Phil Bishop, who is the president of our company at InfoZone, he came up with this concept of a link table. Um, maybe many of you have been using this technique to use link tables when you have multiple fact tables. But um, for those of you who are not really sure about how to utilize the link table, then this is going to be a session for you. So that said, there are some questions coming in. And I will um, walk them through. But before that, if you can go back a picture one slide back, I just want mm -hmm. to introduce everyone. So here are three of our email addresses. Apexha is the uh, speaker for this session, and then myself, Shima Ozins. And Diane is the account manager at InfoZone. So if you have any questions or some requests for the marketing materials, um, case studies, and whatnot, you can reach out to Diane. Okay, uh, one question is, can we have the presentation? So the, uh, the answer is yes. I will make sure that for those of you who registered for this session will receive the materials. So yes, you will get that. And I will also uh, send you the link to the recording. Okay, the next question is, there is a high demand to see the details on every KPI graphical presentation, for example, Excel and tabular data. How do you balance that while preserving real estate and the clean display of data? Apeksha? Uh, yes. So um, I would say that uh, it's, it's basically going back to prioritizing information. And um, I would recommend prioritizing information. Uh, so whatever KPIs are important, make sure they are there on the dashboard. It doesn't matter if the page scrolls. Uh, scrolling is much better than going sideways, sideways or even having multiple sheets. So it doesn't matter if the page scrolls. Make sure you prioritize the KPIs and have only the most important KPIs on the first page, and then you can add to the other sheets. I don't know if I answered that question. Okay, thank you. Um, and then the next question is, I'm currently studying business intelligence. I wonder if the previous webinars on this topic has been recorded or will be held in the future. So um, there are some recordings available. So if you would like to send me an email, I'll send you the link for that, okay? The next question, how is the best way to answer to a client who is asking to replicate his actual Excel file report? I suppose this person is talking about a lot of uh, numbers, and they want the developer to show them in click view as is, perhaps. So what would you recommend, Apeksha? Um, I would recommend um, actually showing them, um, putting the numbers in the form of visuals and showing them that uh, if they, if uh, it becomes or makes their workflow easier, I would recommend first to do that because a lot of times people are very or cannot visualize information like we want to show it. So showing them instead of uh, having them understand is a, a very nice way to just um, put things out there and have them see the capability or the ease of use of visuals instead of uh, having tables. But um, apart from that, I would say that if they really are bent on having tables, then you can have a combination of charts and tables or do some visuals in the table, like uh, the spark lines within the table or the gauges within the table. Thank you. So uh, some of the other experiences or some other things that we've recommended to people who are heavy Excel users is that they're not going to move away from Excel, and we all know this, right? Uh, they love Excel, and they know how to use it. So we, you probably will need to provide a uh, format that they're asking for. But as Apexha was talking about, the visualization will show them the irregular items that you may be difficult to find in Excel. So in addition to the table, as Apexha was mentioning, you could also provide maybe in a separate sheet some visualization looking at, you know, using the same data. 
and perhaps you can walk them through to the dashboard of five dashboard um, five second dashboard rule. So instead of approaching from the high level down, which is five dashboard second rule, and then down, but in this case, or for these users, you may be able to work upward. So starting from the Excel, provide that and show them how you can visualize this data in the visualization, like a graphics and so forth. And then you can start talking about more of a dashboard high level information. Then this user may find it different and hopefully it's useful, more useful than the Excel sheet itself. So there are several ways that you can go by that. Okay. Um, Another question is, uh, can I get one of the old presentations? So send me an email address or send me an email and then I'll provide you the old presentations. And I see some people saying that this webinar was very useful, so thank you very much. Another question that I have, and uh, this is the last one, we're having some troubles to work with designing a user interface to select a date range, date range like clicking a start date and the end date. Now we're using two calendar objects and triggers. Is there a better way? I'm not sure if it's a design question or a technical question, but uh, do you have any response, Apeksha? Um, I, I thought it's more of a technical question. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> sure. I so, um, <laughs> no problem. So this could be more of a financial um, or things like that. So what I've done in the past is that instead of a calendar object, and I understand that some people like to use the calendar objects, but I found it a bit cumbersome in terms of, um, you know, if we are October 8th today, and if you want to look up for September 2nd, 2014, then calendar object is not really the best one because you, you need to go back and whatnot. So what I've done in the past is that I created two input fields and then let them type in. And typing in is basically something that you usually do for websites like Expedia and so forth. So I don't think it's that much of a cumbersome for the users and it, the layout to become cleaner. So um, what I suggest is to use the um, input fields more than calendar objects, but this is gonna be really depending on the user request, I would say. I hope I answered your question. Okay, so that being said, um, let me see, I think one more message came up. Okay, great. So that being said, I'd like to um, close this session. So thank you very much for your time today, and I hope you enjoyed this uh, webinar as well as you, you found it useful. If you could answer the survey at the end of the session, that would be great. Thank you very much all, bye-bye.